Hello! I just wanted to pop on here and say a couple things about the book I read this weekend, Nine Coaches Waiting by Mary Stewart. It's a gothic romance mystery thriller first published in 1958. Seems to have done well when it first came out and continued to be popular over the years. Uh, somehow, though, I never heard of it until last year. Not sure why it took so long for it to cross my path, because it has several elements that are right up my alley, but I heard about it last year, I asked for it for Christmas and received it, and I finally got to read it this weekend, and I really, really liked it. It's about a young woman named Linda Martin, a half-English, half-French orphan who's been hired by a prominent French family to come be the governess for a little boy named Philippe, who's been recently orphaned himself and is living under the custody of his aunt and uncle. This change in Miss Martin's life seems ideal, but it's not long before she starts to feel there's something sinister going on. You see why this sparked my interest, right? That's all I'm going to say plot-wise. I went into it knowing very little, and I tend to think that's best, especially when the story is a mystery, as this is. And this mystery was delicious. Mary Stewart's writing was so descriptive, it was an absolute pleasure to read. The setting is the 1950s, but it's classically gothic with a fabulous, sprawling French chateau surrounded by trees in the mountains with a dangerous, zigzagging road frequently obscured by heavy fog. It's great. The story has a tremendous spooky atmosphere, a collection of eccentric and deceptively charming characters, and the suggestion of impending doom around every corner, which makes you fly through the pages in nervous anticipation. The narrator, Linda Martin, is a likable, capable protagonist. On the rare occasions when she is not acting in the most practical fashion. She acknowledges it and pokes fun at herself, which I find endearing, and when she's faced with a huge responsibility, she doesn't hesitate to rise to the challenge in a truly remarkable way. The biggest thing it reminded me of was, of course, Jane Eyre, and that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do a video on it. Um, it's funny, at one point a couple of the characters actually come right out and refer to Jane Eyre, but it's not a retelling or reimagining. It has its similarities and a couple of possible homages, but it is its own story. It also has several delightful allusions to the Cinderella fairy tale and Shakespeare's Macbeth, as well as many other literary works, and it bears the influence of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, Henry James's The Turn of the Screw, and various mystery writers, especially Agatha Christie. There was one section I felt was a little weak. I had been flying through up to that point, and so when I reached a slower spot, I was surprised to find my attention wandering, but it does come at a point when the characters are going through a drawn-out, stressful situation, so it matches that and emphasizes that, and it fits, so I can't fault it too heavily. I just didn't think the pace was as exciting as it was in the rest of the book. But really, on the whole, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I don't know if I enjoyed the book more because I haven't read a good, spooky, and romantic thriller in a while, or if it was really just that good, I kind of think it was the latter. But I had a wonderful time reading it. I certainly recommend it, especially to my fellow Jane Eyre fans. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, let me know what you think, especially if you've read the book. I'd love to know. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!